November the 11th, 1918. 11 o'clock on the 11th day of the 11th month. I think most of us thought it would last about a year. We thought it couldn't go on longer than that. I can remember that very clearly. The end of the war. Almost every town and village across our region is marking the centenary in one way or another, and in each there are individual stories and memories of those who died. Jeremy Stern is in Whitney for us tonight, where a weekend of events is planned. Jerome, St Mary's Church is in the heart of Whitney, and it's one of the main venues for Whitney Remembers to commemorate the end of the Great War. Now as you can see the church is looking particularly spectacular tonight, lit up in the colour of the poppy and there are thousands of poppies in Whitney this weekend, marking the route that soldiers would have taken on their way to war. Whitney has brought the personal touch to Armistice Day. Tens of thousands of poppies decorate the town. They've all been individually handmade. It makes me really proud of the town. Our original aim was 15,000. We've come out of it with more than 30,000 poppies. At 28,300, we reached one for every member of the population. So that's really special that we've exceeded that number too. The poppies line the route the young men took on their way to war just over a century ago. Many of the 143 men remembered in the town centre volunteered for action. I don't think these men had any idea what they were getting into. They, they had been brought up on a diet of jingoism and patriotism. We had an empire to defend. Um, they, they were intensely patriotic uh, with, with this amazing sense of duty. Um, for some of these men, they'd never even seen the sea. They'd never travelled anywhere. They'd never, they'd never done anything. So it was a big adventure. Children at Wood Green Primary School have marked where Whitney's war dead lived on an interactive map. Biographies of the fallen have been delivered to homes in the town. I think it's going to have like, a very important impact on the community because they're going to be able to see the fact that there were soldiers who lived like, in the same houses that they do now. I knew there were soldiers that lived here but I didn't know and I, know that, I feel like I know them personally now because I've learnt so much about them. You kind of forget that this is what happened to where you lived and it's made it more a part of a living history. Hundreds of people of all ages are taking part in Whitney Remembers. The poppies used this year will be on sale next year to raise money for war veterans. Elsewhere today, rail passengers travelling from Swindon to Cheltenham may have boarded a very special train. More than 2,000 railway workers died in the war and they've all been remembered with their names forming a roll of honour on a Great Western Railway train which left Paddington at 11.36 this morning. They include Edgar Norton, who worked at the Swindon Railway Works and was killed at the end of the Battle of the Somme. It was a great sacrifice. It must have been so frightening and scary. In the conditions they were in, it must have been dreadful. I can't imagine what went through his mind. Um, we're all very proud. Well, Remembrance Sunday is a chance to reflect on the bravery of those like Edgar Norton who served their country. And another hero is a local soldier who ran towards German machine gun fire to save his troops. Historian John Cooksey has been finding out about Edward Brooks. The Western Front in France witnessed some of the most brutal battles of the Great War. Out of the adversity, stories have emerged of incredible courage. Hello. Pleased to meet you. And you? So Keith you Brooks' Edward grandfather, Brooks? Edward Brooks, was a sergeant major in the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry. In April 1917, Brooks found himself in the trenches near Saint-Quentin. The advance was held up by a German machine gun post. He could see what the problem was. We just went over the top, rushed them over open grain to capture the gun. He killed one with his revolver, he stabbed another one with his bayonet. The rest of the gun crew made off. He turned the gun on them before carrying it back to his own lines. 
Have you ever wondered, Keith, what it was like for him? It must have been absolutely terrible. <laughs> Apparently, when he fired on them with a machine gun, he deliberately fired over their heads because he wouldn't shoot anybody in the back. King George V presented Brooks with the Victoria Cross, the most coveted of military honours. And when he came home to Oxford, Brooks was given a hero's welcome. Crowds lined the streets and cheered him on all the way from the railway station to here in Headington. Triumphal music boomed around and the great and the good of Oxford queued up to shake Edward's hand and wish him well. Brooks returned to the front line and survived. He died aged 61 and is buried at Rose Hill Cemetery. A hero to many, to Yvonne Green, he was just granddad. I will always remember him with a big grin on his face. He was my granddad and I loved him. He was, he was just like any granddad. And thinking back how he was then, you would never know that he'd been through what he had in those trenches. I've heard many stories of bravery in warfare, but this one, to charge a machine gun with the bullets flying, to take the machine gun, to save your fellow man, is a truly extraordinary act. And Edward Brooks was a truly remarkable man. The amazing story of Edward Brooks. Uh, I'm joined by the Reverend Toby Wright. Uh, Toby, I went down to the commemorative stone you've got here um, in Whitley earlier on. I saw all those names I and mean, some families wiped out, brothers dying. I never knew these people, it was a century ago, but I still felt very sad. It's tremendously poignant as 100 years on we commemorate these real individuals. There are 147 names here in Whitney of young men who lost their lives and it just brings it um, to the forefront of our minds and we realise the depth of pain and loss. Feels like Whitney's really come together this weekend with the Whitney Remembers. So much going on. Tell me, tell me more about what's happening. Whitney's a great place and all sorts of things are happening. The school children have been making the figures on, on the green here. Um, we've got the corn exchange happening um, and voices of um, reading out the names of those who've died. There's art exhibitions. Um, all the shops have, have got behind it and decorated their windows. Poppies in front of houses where soldiers were killed. Um, just amazing coming together. We've got events happening here in the church tomorrow um, on, on Sunday and that's going to be an incredible live music, um, live teas, all sorts of things happening together. Oh, absolutely spectacular, very very good Tony, Toby, thank you very much. Now another thing that's happening is a fly past that happens at 12.30pm in the town centre so you need to be there right on time. Jeremy Stone and Whitney, thank you very much indeed.